Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is episode number 82B, the answer portion of my What Is It series. Thank you for joining me. So we have four items here that we have to identify or have been identified. Let's go through them one at a time. But first let me say this. I have told you many times that this series is pretty much of a failure. I'm all the way up to number 82. And uh, only 6,000 people watch this with about 60 uh, comments, so that's not even enough comments for me to get the answers. So I am discouraged about this, but I'll still run this for a few more episodes till I'm out of tools. But do not send me anything more unless it's absolutely outstanding. All right, this is item one. Let me take the tags off here, which might have given it away. See, it's a Waltham. Somebody said that. It's probably a Waltham. Well, Waltham used to make watches, and pretty high quality ones, like, kind of like Elgin's. And on this side it says, Resilient Mainsprings. Well, whatever that means. So, someone said it is used to measure the thickness and length of mainsprings on watches, like let's say pocket watches or alarm clocks. I'm not sure. Notice that this is a bit of an eccentric right here and the distance changes. Someone also said there is parts missing, something that goes in this groove. So where the mainspring went, I don't know. If it's used for replacing mainsprings or uh, determining what you need to order, I just have no idea. There are no patents, no other information. I've done a lot of searches and probably some of you did as well. And thank you to Terry Kirkpatrick for sending this to me. It is a really unique item. I have never seen it. Looking very carefully and closely at this part, you can read it. It says thickness in one one hundredth of a millimeter and over here width in one tenth of a millimeter, I believe is what it says. So it can measure the width and the thickness, evidently, of the mainspring. So I guess that's what it is. This is number two. I'll come back to that because I want to spend quite a bit of time on that, even showing you how it works. So number three here, again, it, I thought it was a cheap tool, but I think it probably was fairly expensive. And the name on it is m and Gripper. Tool Gripper. Can you read that? And it's made in Japan, not China. Stainless steel nylon or some kind of soft plastic jaws. People suggested that it was for removing the aerator on a sink faucet. I just went up and I couldn't get ours off. You know, unless you take that aerator off once every other day, it's not ever going to come off without destroying the thing and this wouldn't grip. So they also said uh, that it could be used on any kind of plated item, knobs and different things you might want to take off. So I, I guess that's what it is. It's kind of generic. It looks like a Brookstone hard to find tool catalog type of tool to me. That's a Father's Day gift if I ever saw one. And number four from Roger Taylor. We did not get an answer that, you know, people wanted to say it'd be great for taking off bottle caps. Well, it doesn't do that. No names on it. No identification besides the Roger Taylor. Someone said that it he had one just like this and it came in a box of optometrist tools so maybe it was used to adjust the temples or different parts of eyeglasses when the doctor fits you for those $700 designer frames. Alright, we're back to item number two and it is a craftsman but it might have been sold and labeled uh, by other companies as well and it is used along with a grinder to sharpen plane irons, chisels, screwdrivers, etc., etc. I did a little research and I found it in the 1966 Sears tool catalog, but they probably sold us for decades. Kind of expensive, so I also printed out the original set of directions that I found on vintage machinery. So let's go through that real quick and then I'm going to set it up on a grinder. Don't hang up yet. 
and show you a possible use that I might have for it in my shop. I'm not a woodworker, so I'm not interested in plain irons. So in the 1966 catalog, they claim that it's a new grinding attachment. Whole stools, and it's ten bucks. Well, that would be at least a hundred dollars right now, and there is two pictures of how it is used and how it is held on your Craftsman grinder. And here is the original owner's manual. And it's about six pages long, so there's quite a bit of information. Let me show you a couple sketches showing you possible uses. And here it is being used to sharpen or hollow grind a screwdriver. Now who the heck's ever going to do that? And here it is being used to sharpen a plain iron. Chisels also. And here it's being used to sharpen a knife. Come on, get serious. Now here's the first real use that I found for it that makes any sense and that is dressing or truing your grinding wheel and we're going to go over to the grinder right now and I'll show you how that is set up. So that's a diamond that I'm going to hold in the device. But one more thing here regarding the jaws. So it will be fastened onto the grinder after you take the other uh, tool rest off by this bracket right here and then this little screw changes the depth of the cut and then this broken little crank here it is a rack and pinion in here so it's rather precisely built actually allows you to move it back and forth and that's what I'm the most interested in this motion in regards to dressing a wheel I took the two knobs off to show you this that there is an insert here of some kind of real hard rubber and I believe, I couldn't find this in the, the direction, but I believe if you're going to pl put a plain iron in there, like, like that, you would probably install the jaw like this. And this would keep, I would hope, the iron from twisting on you. And then we've got various slots and V-grooves right here that could be used to hold the screwdriver. And the rubber would also grip it so it wouldn't move. And what I'm actually going to set up is to dress the wheel. And this is a diamond, but it's round, kind of like a screwdriver. So it will fit into one of these grooves. And the jaw, of course, would be mounted in this fashion. So I'll see you over at the grinder momentarily. All right, I've got it mounted on my 7-inch Craftsman grinder. I suppose it will fit any brand. I don't really know. I have taken off the guard for photographic purposes. Do not do that. And I have taken off the tool rest as well in order to fit this up. <laughs> All right, so I have clamped securely the diamond in uh, one of the little V's right here. These are tightened down nicely. I'm very close to the wheel. I'll, re I'll move the camera. And once I turn the machine on, I can just move the diamond back and forth across the wheel. And then as I need a little more depth, I will screw this in just fractionally, just a tiny amount. I'll wear a full face shield when I do this. So there's the diamond nib. And just back and forth. Being careful not to move this because I don't think it's all that rigid so I don't want to bump it and I, it is very square with the face of the wheel right now. If it isn't square with the face some shimming or adjusting will be necessary. Okay here I go. And that's it. But boy, could I feel that grinding dust on my bare legs. I should have been wearing chaps. Well, I'll have to admit that did a beautiful job of dressing that wheel. It sharpens it and shapes it. Of course, it would have to be moved over to the other side to do the other wheel, which is quite a chore. 
Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Lots and lots of videos coming up in the future.